Welcome to DSL Systems Autopilot Feed training video, cross-contamination and how to prevent it. In a batch process, cross-contamination is where residue of one batch is picked up by the next batch, and there are two ways to prevent it. One is to carefully sequence batches, so that batches are only followed by others which can follow it, and another is by flushing out the plant between the two batches. This can either be done by making the first batch a self-flushing batch, or to produce a special flushing batch between the two. In the following example, I've set up some different coloured products where cross-contamination would be a problem for, for changing the colour. For example, if a red product was produced followed by a white product, the white product might pick up traces of red, turning the white product pink, and so this would not be allowed. In Autopilot for Feed, each product is given a cross-contamination number between 1 and 64. Now your menu system might change slightly from this. Change product definition. So if I pick up a red product here, I've set up under batch, the batch tab, a cross-contamination group of six. There is then a matrix to show what can follow what batch. Change cross-contamination product matrix. So this shows a 64 by 64 matrix of what can follow what. If I press the F1 help key, it shows that blank means there's no contamination risk. One is a contamination risk that can be cleared by making the first batch a self-flushing batch. And I also use three here, a contamination risk that needs a separate full flush batch. So going back to our example of the red product with uh, type 6, if the previous batch on the top here was a type 6, then a black can follow it with no cross-contamination problem. A blue or turquoise would need a self-flushing batch and a cream would need a full flushing batch between or after the red product. So if you have products red, grey, cream and white to make, you could make these without a flushing batch either in the order red, which is type 6, followed by a grey. A grey doesn't need a full flushing batch. And a grey is a type 5. And after a type 5, you could make a cream, which is a type 3. And when the previous batch is a type 3, you can make a white. An alternative way to make these would be a white, cream, grey and red. Now there's another feature of cross-contamination protection and that is that any raw material, as ingredient, can also have its cross-contamination type because that also can leave behind a residue. For animal feed and pet food plants this is normally used with small drug and additive additions which are added sometimes as part of an additive formula. I've set up an example of pink. So menu, change, raw material definition. And if I go to pink, under the cross-contamination tab, you can set up a level here that anything above that level adds these to the cross-contamination, uh, shall we say, left behind. And you can have another level over here as well. You can have a higher level with add more <laughs> ingredients. So if a product has a pink, we add, this is one, two, three, four, five, we add group six to the cross-contamination. So if you make a white, which is a type seven, and you have some of this raw material pink in it, we also add group six. And you have to therefore uh, make allowances for the previous batch to be a type 7 and it's a type 6. Now 
you can see this more clearly if I go to override cross contamination for the mixer and here it shows that the previous batch here going through the mixer was left behind so we say a type 6 and a type 7 while I'm here I'll show you that this is how you override the cross contamination and if you go to the mixer and click OK followed by yes then these two cross contamination groups have just been removed obviously you need some protection for that and uh, it may be password protected to stop you accessing that now, there are different areas where cross contamination is checked batching is one pellet press line is another and the meals bins are another as well there's a similar mechanism for raw materials if we go to change raw material definition and we look at this pink one again here there's a separate one for the intake cross-contamination and here it is here there's a separate matrix to change cross-contamination material matrix and you would set up the same rules here if you wanted to protect against cross-contamination on normally the bulk intake now cross-contamination zero is a special case anything a cross contamination uh, a product with cross contamination zero can follow anything else and anything can follow a type zero which means that it effectively is a flushing batch and I've set one up here flushing batch here cross contamination zero is effectively a flushing batch I hope this has explained cross-contamination. If you have any other questions, then please contact DSL Systems. Thank you for your attention.